Hi everyone! So tonight's video I am super excited for. We're going to be painting some winter stuff. We're going to be doing um, just a whole bunch of different winter designs and they're ones that I would say are classic basic. We're doing three different levels of painting tonight. It's a little bit more extreme than last month's. Last month I did autumn type uh, painting for our live class and so last month I would say all of them were pretty straightforward. This month that we're going to get into some shading and some detailing and things that are just a little bit more a little more advanced, a little more fun. So I hope you are all ready for that. If you are interested in signing up and being part of my future life classes and getting uh, reference photos in advance and things of that nature, then I would recommend that you go ahead and you go to my description box here and I have a link to my email or have my email listed. Send me an email saying that you would like to be part of the future live classes. I'll add you to the email list and then you'll get advance notice, which is where you'll get the reference photos. And as I'm saying this about reference photos, I realize I forgot to put the reference photos on my own phone. So that's fine because I can see them on the screen just like you guys can. But it was just one of those like, hmm, that'll make it a little more interesting, but we'll, we'll make it work. So here are the three designs we're going to be doing. We're going to do snowflakes penguins or a penguin and a Santa Claus. So I didn't want to do all Christmas because it's winter. It's not necessarily Christmas. There are plenty of people that do not celebrate Christmas. Even if you are someone who does not celebrate Christmas, you would never paint a Santa Claus. Bear with me and I would still recommend watching because that's the part of the video where we're going to be doing shading and more detail work. And even if a Santa Claus isn't your thing, you may still get some valuable information out of it. So like I said, stick with me through the end and I'm sure you'll find something useful out of it. If at any point through the video, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in the chats. I will be keeping my eye on it the whole time. And whenever there's a nice lull when something's curing or, you know, I'm, I don't know, just looking for a question moment, I will definitely read through those and make sure that all of them get answered. So without further ado, let's look at some supplies that we need. You're gonna need three practice tips. I have already painted mine with base colors. I have a dark blue and two light blues. You're going to need some gel polish for painting, gel polish, gel paint. If you aren't a gel person, acrylic paint or regular nail lacquer will work fine. Uh, the colors that I, I feel like we'll need, but I never know exactly and we might need more. <laughs> it's kind of how it goes. I usually when I'm painting a set, I'll think I need, you know, these four or five colors or whatever it is that I pick out and then halfway through it, I go and I run and I grab more. But what we have, what I figured out is our list is black and white, pretty standard. Blue, which is what I use on my backgrounds. It doesn't, it's not needed for anything else and you could do whatever color background you want. Yellow, red, some shades of nude and pink. So then you're also going to need some gel painting brushes or whatever other painting brushes that you want to use if they're gel or not. Hello everyone. Um, and then a lint-free towel. I say lint-free in, pe in previous videos I've said paper towels, but a lint-free towel such as this one is in my mind far superior to a paper towel. And so I would recommend that you find these. These are from Koopa and I actually just reordered a bunch because I ran out and I tried to find them elsewhere because I didn't think I could get up to enough money from Koopa to get their free shipping and it didn't take long and I surpassed the shipping. <laughs> the free shipping amount doesn't, doesn't take too much when you're shopping nail supplies. I mean, am I right? You can add things up pretty quick, but I love these things. Um, so those lint-free towels are, I, I love them. They're, they just clean your brushes so much better. So you need something like that. Paper towels do work. A uh, gel top coat, a curing lamp, and the attached reference photos. And you guys have them, but I don't. That's okay. <laughs> they will be on the video. So here's a picture of our snowflakes. This is the first design we're gonna do. This is the easiest. So when I say it's the easiest of the ones we're doing, and um, it's that's what I would probably say is the case, but the other thing to think about when you're painting snowflakes is they can be as easy or as difficult as you want them to be. There is not a certain like this is what a snowflake looks like and you can't veer, veer off of that track at all. You can have so much fun with a snowflake. I recently saw a video on Instagram and if I could remember the artist, now it's going to bother me of who did it. Nope, can't remember. I'll probably figure it out later and if I do figure it out, I will put a link in the description box below. But she took little hexagon glitters and she placed them, six of them, in a little circle and then she capped it with uh, builder gel 
and then she put matte top coat over it so hexagon glitters showed through the matte it looks really pretty kind of foggy glittery effect and then she painted a very simple snowflake on top of it so that glitter showed through underneath oh my goodness it was gorgeous and I know I'm gonna have to convince one of my clients to do it this year because it was stunning with that being said, my point of this conversation is that there are so many different variables to snowflakes. You can do so many different things with them that I'm going to show you probably three. Yeah, I think three is a good number. I'm going to show you three snowflake styles that I use a lot and I paint snowflakes constantly on my clients. My grandmother specifically has snowflakes on her nails from the 1st of December until like the end of April every year. Every time she comes to get her nails done, she goes, you know, I'm thinking snowflakes. <laughs> And I just have to stop myself from laughing because I could have told her that, that she's going to want snowflakes because it's the whole, it's like six months stretch of snowflakes. I've painted them a lot. So, and, and then I've got other clients that also want snowflakes. And the crazy thing is I even have snowflakes on my nails right now. So I have some experience, although my snowflake chip, my snowflake nail had a chip, which you guys will probably see. But anyways, Without further ado, let's get started on some snowflakes. As far as supplies for this particular design goes, what we need is, I would recommend white gel paint. If you do not have white gel paint, gel polish is okay, um, but I probably would actually use acrylic paint because gel polish will spread. It'll self-level and it'll spread out and it'll kind of fog a little bit. And to get those nice, crisp, sharp little points on a snowflake, you don't want that to happen. So if you don't have gel paint, I actually maybe would go with white acrylic paint as the next best. And if you guys want to know, know anything about acrylic paint versus gel paint and that whole concept, I do have a live class that is just about acrylic paint versus gel paint, when to use which one, how to use them, so on and so forth. And that link is already in the description box below. So after this video, if you need, you know, more time with my smiling face, I will direct you to that one. So here we go. Here is, there's my phone. Yeah need to see that nothing good on there anyway here we have the three nails that are base coated so we have the first one is the dark one which is what we're going to do with the snowflakes and then we've got these two light ones I was going to do them all the same blue just so that we had like a universal background but I fell in love I'll tell you these colors so the lighter blue is this bottle which is silver writing on a black bottle really hard to see it's called the Manhattan from Madame Glam it is so pretty it's this I see this icy blue color that's going to go behind our snowman, or not snowman, our Santa and our penguin. And then the darker blue color, which is kind of a similar, similar type, nice kind of rich jelly color with some glitter in it. It looks almost black on the video, but it's like a royal blue. It's this bottle, which is, I believe, Tomboy. Yeah, Tomboy from Madame Glam. And it's one from one of their advent calendars maybe two years ago from one of their advent calendars. I love the Madame Glam advent calendar, by the way. And I think I'm, I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that just because I'm excited. And so, yeah, we'll be talking about that advent calendar again. So to start out with our, I'm just going to tie my hair back because otherwise it'll be all up in the jaw. Okay, hair is away from my face. We're going to be using the Madame Glam white gel paint. And if you guys think that this is, if you've never tried this gel paint before, I highly recommend it and this is going to really be crazy but I'm also going to use my Madame Glam gel painted brushes. I'm going to use their detail liner. Really like my favorite brushes. It actually has white gel paint on it right now. That's, I don't know. I don't know how to clean I guess. Which is it's fine. It's not cured in. That's the joy of having a cap. Okay open that up. I'm going to grab this blue. I'm going to start out by painting the most simple basic snowflake I do. This one is like the snowflake that you do when you have a client that can't sit still and you just want to get it done and you want them to be out the door <laughs> which you know we have those two I'm gonna zoom this in a little closer that looks nice and crisp okay so I'm going to get a little bit of gel on my brush and the one thing to keep in mind with snowflakes is that they are in six segments and that they are symmetrical so besides that have fun with it. Six segments, symmetrical. If you ever look at a snowflake, illustration or real, I guess some illustrations people do different numbers, but it should be six. Should be six. So we're going to do this one up here. It's going to be small. So you're going to start out with one line going across. Now getting those six segments to be evenly spaced is probably the most difficult part of any snowflake. 
but once you've painted them a few times or a few hundred times, whatever it takes, it just becomes, the spacing becomes really natural to you. And so after you do the first, you know, line going through, you're just going to add, breaking it up like that. And then you're going to add one splitting those sections in half. So after you have your base, this is the base of almost any snowflake. There are different, you know, differences that you can do. Now to do just a really simple snowflake where you don't even have to think about it practically, just draw lines between them connecting these, these lines here going through. Like I said, this is the case if you want a client out the door, you don't have to worry about your lines being that thin and delicate because it's quick. And then after you have that done, I would maybe switch to a dotting tool, but it, depending on your time, if you're really rushed, you don't want to switch to a dotting tool. Just grab your brush again with a little bit more gel on it and make a dot on the end. Now, is this the most pretty, elegant, delicate snowflake that's out there? No, it's not. Is it quick, effective, and look like a snowflake? Yes. And you know, there are times when that's what you want. So if that's all you need in a snowflake, then you can be done. So that I would say is like the easy snowflake. I'm going to throw that in my lamp for 10 seconds so that it can cure. So that was, that was snowflake number one. And if you look at the reference photo, there is, you know, a bunch of different styles and patterns um, of them. I couldn't fit too much of the reference photo in my little picture there because of making sure there was enough space next to it to actually see what we're painting. But there are a couple different styles that you can see. So that was, none of them look like this, but you can kind of get ideas and you can look at clip art of snowflakes all day long getting inspiration. So the next one we're going to do is going to be over here. It's going to be like a moderate difficulty. Start out the same way with your three. This one's going to be a partial snowflake so that we don't run out of space. I have a fuzz. Go away. So we're going to go like this. And then the other lines would be going across the bottom or the side like that. So now to do something just a little bit more difficult, one thing that I really like to do is I like to make these that are opposite. So like if you look at the segments of the snowflake as a V, then you flip that V over, you invert it and draw it the other way like this. And then you end up with like a little six point star, which obviously we don't have the whole thing because this is a partial snowflake. So it's like a little three point star in the middle. I think that is so pretty and it really doesn't take too much effort as far as difficulty goes. And then you can add like a little, another little V on the ends like this. Still really quick. Am I right? Not too difficult there, but it's a little, little more taxing than that first one. We've got more, more lines, more angles to try to keep straight. So there is our second snowflake. Whoop. I just dropped my gel paint. It did spill miraculously in the lamp it goes for 10 seconds. Normally this gel paint requires a one minute cure, but because we aren't overlapping anything and I'm just curing it to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere while we're painting the last one. You don't have to worry about the full, the full cure time. While that's curing, I'm gonna open up some of my other gel paints that, I'm going, that we're going to need for our next design since this one is almost done. I'm opening up black gel paint, yellow gel paint. We already have the white, so that's a good start. I'm actually gonna grab red too for right now. Okay, so take that out. Now for our next little design here, for our last snow, oh, I tipped over my white gel paint again. Goodness, okay, we're going to be doing the most difficult snowflake, and this probably won't be the most difficult snowflake I've ever painted. I'm gonna show you my chipped nail because these are so pretty. There's just different designs on here. This one is very similar to the one that I did the partial of, but I just did two of the little prongs on the end. There's so many different beautiful ways to do snowflakes. So I'm gonna grab this. We're gonna make our lines again, doing our six to start with. There's the first line. Now the more detail you wanna put in a snowflake, the more conscientious conscientious you have to be to make all of your lines very thin and very delicate. So there we go. We've got our first our first row of lines. Same thing, they all start out with those six. Now once you have this done, if you're going to want to be doing 
more details in your snowflake, start small and start inside. So I'm going to start out by doing the same thing as the last one with a little row of inverted Vs, keeping them more, more tight, more snug. And then after I do these, I'm going to get all of those drawn in. Then from the points of those Vs, so I've got, you know, the little V, I'm going to take another line coming out from it like this. Now there are so many different ways to do snowflakes and there are so many different styles of snowflake. There are some people that like to do a lot of dotting on their snowflakes with a dotting tool and different things. Um, and so you might want to consider just looking at different art for that. So at the ends of these points, I'm going to be adding a diamond shape like that. through take your time if you have if you're doing this on yourself or somebody else that is wiggly don't try to do one that's too detailed if you're feeling you know like your hand and your brush are shaky today maybe don't try to do a super detailed snowflake know you know know your limits and know what you're feeling like so then going back to my my main post those first ones I did I'm going to be adding one of those diamond shapes to each one, going back through. And then on the ends of these lines, I'm going to be adding the V like this. So as you can see, there's a lot more detail and effort put into this one. Instead of having, you know, the six different segments, we actually have 12 because we added those ones in the middle and it is so beautiful. Those super detailed snowflakes are just gorgeous. So I'm going to put this one into my lamp and then we can look at our next design. Okay, so that one is going in now for uh, for a full minute because it was the the gel paint and it's all we're all done with it. So I don't know if you guys noticed but my camera was flashing at me saying it needed me to switch the battery. So while we're talking about penguins, I'm going to be fixing that. Okay, so for penguins, there are different styles. Obviously, you can do like a realistic penguin if you wanted to. Saved by the backup battery. Um, that is something that I've sculpted a few times. I've sculpted realistic penguins. I really like to, but they aren't wintry to me. Like a realistic penguin you can wear year round. A cute little penguin with a hat is is wintry. I shouldn't say Christmassy, it's wintry. Because you can have, um, like I love the penguin that has the ear warmers. Love that. I think those are hilarious. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give them ear warmers. The one in our reference photo, as you can see, has a blue band going up and around. Ear warmers, scarf, just cracks me up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get out blue too. So I have red gel paint out, blue, yellow, black, and white. If you wanted to do some of this with uh, gel polish, you certainly could. This design isn't necessarily as only use gel paint as the snowflakes are, but... Um, yeah, I like gel paint. It paints easier. It's more like, it's like the best of both worlds between gel polish and the curability and the smoothness and acrylic paint and the crisp precision. It's somewhere in between. And I don't think that about all gel paint. I mainly think that about the Madame Glam. Ugly Ducklings is okay too that I've tried, but some of the other ones, I just, I don't even want to open the jars because they're sticky and kind of gross. And there's cats running around around me. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our penguin without further ado. So that is on going to be on one of the nails that is the light icy blue. I'm going to grab the Madame Glam application brush, which is right here. I'm going to grab my black gel paint and we're going to be painting the body, just the like the beginning body shape. I prefer my penguins to be like the egg shape instead of having the head sort of separated from the body and giving him a neck. I don't think penguins look right when they have a neck like that as much. Personal preference there, obviously, however you want to do it. So we're going to lay our brush down like this. We're going to kind of wiggle it to spread out the bristles to get that nice rounded top of the head shape and then drag it down and around. So if you do it that way and as like I said I kind of wiggle your bristles it will help 
the gel distribute throughout the brush, which will give you a smoother and more even sided penguin. So we're gonna just go like this. If you want him to be smaller, you could certainly paint him smaller. We're gonna get just a first base layer of the black down the middle. And then once you have this base layer done, I'm gonna apply it a little thicker on this side. Then I'm going to add his flippers, his wings. I'm going to switch back to this little Madame Lamb detail brush. And we're going to, on the sides, give him his flippers. There's one. And then on the other side, add the other one. Okay. All right. Now that that step is done, it pretty much, it needs to be fully cured. You don't wanna not fully cure it. This is all gel paint. You don't wanna add layers on top of it. You don't wanna flash cure it and then paint more. You want this to be cured. You don't wanna take any chances of it getting messed up. So we're gonna put that in our lamp. And while that is, while that's curing in the lamp, we're going to talk about the advent calendar from Madame Glam. So this is the third year that I have participated in the Madame Glam advent calendar. And every year they have products in there that they haven't released yet that are new, that are cool. And I don't know what is in there or, you know, if they're going to do that necessarily, but they always, they always throw some surprises in. There's usually some colors that aren't released anywhere else or that haven't been released yet or just something. And I'm going to be opening one the you know, every day of December I'm going, or not, a, well, from December 1st until the 26th, because they have an extra one this year we're going to be opening one of the little presents. And I say we're because Melody wants to participate. She sees the advent calendar sitting on my nail supply cabinet and she asks about it all the time. She goes, is it December yet? Can we open one? I say, no, it's not. And then I'm going to be, once I get enough products opened and I am really excited about them, I'm going to also be making some tutorials using them. And so I'm going to be opening them definitely on Instagram stories. So you'll get to see some really fresh reactions from Melody, I'm sure, there if you are interested and otherwise, um, depending, I might also post them here. I'll decide how that goes once we get started on it. But I'm excited because, you know, nail mail every day. It's, like, it's, you know, it's exciting for any nail enthusiast. So here we go. Here's our penguin. I did not wipe out my brush because I was talking. That's pretty much how that goes. To wipe out my brush, I usually just set it down in my lint-free towel, pinch, and like squeegee it out and it gets the gel out so quickly. So now after we have our gel brush clean, we're going to actually, I'm gonna get another gel brush. We're gonna use the ultra liner, which is bigger than the detail brush, but isn't super wide or super big. It's just like a good classic painting size. And we're going to give our penguin his, his white area. So I'm going to outline the top of his eye. He's got an M, like a McDonald's M. There's the first part of it. Now we're gonna do the other side. And then carry it down. And on the other side, carry it down and around. And then fill it in. And so my, for some reason, my black gel paint did not fully cure, which is, that's cool. So it's kind of wrinkling and pulling a little bit. Hopefully when I cure it this time, that will be corrected. I've not had that issue before. I am using a new lamp though, which I opened on, I opened live about a week ago. And it doesn't always seem to fully cure things. So I'm not so sure about it. I like it and I like that it is rechargeable, but I've had some other various issues like right there that gel is completely wet. All right, well, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to cure this and we'll see how it goes. So I'm putting that back in, turning it on. I don't know, maybe I just didn't put it in far enough. That could be what it was. I set it too close to the sides, or too close to the opening. I don't know. 
we'll find out. We'll see how it looks after this one. So after we give, after this is done, we can do the rest of the stuff in, the rest of the painting in one session. And because this is like the medium difficulty design, I would say, just because there's more details and more layers, um, we're not going to do any shading on our penguin. So the real fun stuff and the shading is going to happen on our Santa Claus. And so we're going to have some more, more to do on him, even though it's still going to be a little bit easier. And I had this idea when I was preparing myself tonight for this class. Would you guys enjoy a portrait painting class like where we painted a realistic face? Something like um, when I did the Cruella set last May, something with like a really detailed, super fun, you know, many layered face. I think that might be a fun live class to shoot with you. We could take votes on who we should paint. We could do, for some reason, I feel like Lucille Ball would be fun, but we could do, we could do anybody. So we've got another, we've got this next layer done here. I'm going to see if it looks, it looks more cured now. I must not have just set it in my lamp far enough. That makes me feel better. Okay. So because of that, we are going to apply another coat since it's really streaky. Isn't that fun though when you have a new piece of equipment and you have to relearn how to use it? That's the same thing like anytime you get a new computer or a new phone or for me the worst one is a new camera and you have to relearn how to use it. I hate that. I'm so, I don't know, my previous devices I get very attached to because I don't dare want to learn how to reuse something. Okay, this looks so much better. This should be the smooth, this should be how smooth it would have looked after the last one if I would have, I guess, stuck it in my lamp all the way. So there we go. Looks so nice, so bright, so beautiful. We're going to put that back in the lamp for another minute. I apologize that we're, you know, taking longer than we need to. The other thing about my new lamp that I don't totally love is that it beeps louder. So if you guys missed the video on my new lamp, this this is it. It's the um, iGel Beauty LED Pro lamp. It says right there. I like that it's rechargeable. That is the reason I bought it. And I'm we're still in the getting to know you phase. We'll see. But the Phantom dust collector I got from iGel Beauty, I love. That thing is fantastic. It collects dust way better than my Young Nails dust collector. And it is much quieter and it has multiple strengths. Like you can turn it low, medium, high, which I think is super helpful. So no no hesitation or regrets with that one. The lamp, I'm still trying to figure out, but I'm sure eventually I'll get used to it and the beeping won't bother me so much. It just seems like it's really loud. Okay, it'll be about done. All right, so now that we have our penguin started like so, we gotta give him some eyes, we gotta give him a beak, we gotta give him some warm weather wear. My eye, my, so in the reference photo, the penguin's eyes, a lot of them have like that happy squinty eye look which is what we're gonna do I don't like the little pink cheeks on a penguin for some reason my personal preference is that that looks wrong because a penguin's not gonna blush it's not I don't know so I'm gonna give him the little eyes though we're gonna give him so when you're painting eyes like this take note of where you're placing them and like how you start and so we're going to do that first one and then we're going to do the second one over here. Like so. Two cute little eyes. And uh, Pink Star Glitter. Oh wait, no. Sarah J. Wrong person. So, uh, the Young Nails Dust Collector that I have is five years old. Or I guess I should say had because I don't have it anymore. But it was five years old. And it is possible they have updated it since then. And that the one I have is just too old to be valid anymore. And I loved it in the beginning and I thought it did its job in the beginning. Just recently, it doesn't seem like like it was as good as it lived up to be or like it like I thought it should be. Okay, so then there's our little penguin's beak. When you paint a penguin's beak, if it's from like the front view, then we're going to do just it looks almost like a leaf is kind of the way I like to think of it. So that yellow is so bright that it's kind of hard to see it on the camera. It's like the white from behind it just washes it out. 
But then we're also going to take our white and we're going to give him two little half circle feet, or not even half circle, just like little curved feet on the bottom. If you want to do some of this in orange instead of yellow, or even just do some outlining in orange, that one brighten it up. I'm actually going to grab my red now, and just because I feel like the beak could be a little more obvious. And here I said we weren't going to do any shading, and I lied. I'll be adding just a little half. Yeah, that makes his beak look so much more noticeable. Okay, and then we're going to take, still using the red, I'm going to be adding the earmuffs. So right on the sides here, just plop down some ovals. Here's the next oval. And then I'm going to do, I'm gonna do the scarf in blue. We're gonna do the, like the band of the earmuffs in blue. So I think we're gonna do the scarf in blue too. And like I said before, there's no overlapping. So I'm not like painting over the same area twice. And so that is why we can just keep painting and not have to cure or flash cure. If you are using gel polish instead, I would flash cure more frequently just because that has a tendency to bleed a little bit more. Um, yeah, so if you were using a different product, then you would still want to. Now we're gonna be adding his scarf. I have a penguin video coming up and you guys will see a preview of it in my winter Christmas nail art preview, which will be uploaded in a little over a week. It'll be the last Tuesday of November, whatever date that ends up being. There is the cutest little penguin and the whole time I'm painting this, I'm thinking of my other penguin that I just finished and that I'm so excited for you guys to get to see. We're going to be doing the rest of the scarf. Start out with just a curved band going across. If you wanted to use a slightly bigger brush like the Ultra Liner, is that what it's called? Ultra Liner? I'm questioning myself. Yeah, Ultra Liner instead of the Detail Liner. That probably would have made that process a little bit quicker. And then add a bump on one side. And then from the bump, carry that down and then add lines, little like dashed lines for the bottom and carry that through. And then you guys, I'm gonna lie again. And I know, Sarah J, you said you, when I said that I wasn't gonna shade my penguin, you were waiting for me to <laughs> shade the penguin. Anyway, that's, that's how it goes. I always do that. There are so many designs where I'm like, you know, I'm gonna keep this simple. <laughs> and then I just can't, it doesn't work. I'm gonna take a little bit of black on my brush and I'm going to just go down one side of that overlapping part of my scarf and just brush that down a little bit. Makes such a big difference. Okay, so there we go. There is our penguin, super cute little guy. We are going to put him in the lamp. If you were to do this on a client, they would think they have the cutest thing on, on their nails. Cause I mean, who doesn't love a little penguin? Penguins have always been a favorite of mine. Okay, so that's in the lamp. And then, yes. So then Sarah, you also just said um, that they came out with a new one and marketed it, and marketed it. Yeah. Well, I get really, really offended by Young Nails marketing <laughs> because they do so many things that, okay, not to go on a rant here, but the thing about Young Nails, as far as like their Instagram and their YouTube accounts that bother me the most is it seems to me like they're marketing towards people that aren't knowledgeable and aren't professionals. Just some of the terms that they use aren't the professional terms. I, I can't think of an exact example of that, but I've just heard things that they've said that just, I, it makes me stop and think like, do these people have any idea what they're doing? Do they know, do they know what they're talking about? And the biggest pet peeve of mine, and I've even commented a long time ago before I was like, you know what, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> I commented on a few of their YouTube videos because they got their model's skin covered in acrylic monomer. Like they had their brush completely saturated and they just go over it and they just got, it, it was so much chemical exposure to not only their client, but to the tech that was doing it. 
and it was so sloppy and so unprofessional and I was just I personally have stepped away from young nails just because of some of the stuff like that that they've done and so I wouldn't buy from them but that's me I used to buy from them I've used I actually still use some of their uh, before they switched to the slick pour I also don't care for their slick pour so before they switched to slick pour and they had I actually have one out here and they had these little colored acrylic jars I use these and I still use them on occasion when there's a color that I certainly need that is I have from there and no place else I will use them but otherwise their products just don't do it for me so I don't know but that new phantom pro is like from eye gel beauty also I fell prone to their marketing but it it's good I'm glad that they sucked me in yeah because it it's good so pink star glitter back a few minutes ago you asked if I could do a live tutorial of nails so do you mean my current nails what's on my nails I if that's if that is what you mean I won't be doing a live video of that one but I do have a tutorial that's coming up a week from Saturday I think I'd have to look at my calendar to know for sure I'm pretty sure a week from Saturday is when the tutorial for the deer and the snowflakes and the sweater is coming out so moving on we have our Santa Claus where I do get to shade yay even though I already did shade because you know, can't help myself so we're going to be doing a Santa Claus this was the cutest reference photo I could find. There were some that I actually liked better, but this one just, for some reason, stuck out to me. He's got the cute little cute little cheeks. He's got a smile. He's got the little round nose. I like this one. So we're going to be doing him. And for the colors, I knew I was going to be shading. So I even grabbed two shades of the Madame Glam Gel Polish from their new Friends and Family collection, which is what's on my nails for anyone who's curious. And these are Taste Like Glam and Pivot. So there's mild difference between them. And if you may notice, they aren't quite as light as where uh, the reference photo or what you may normally consider a Santa Claus to be. They aren't that like ivory bright skin tone. They're a little more like neutral skin tone, medium skin tone, which um, I chose intentionally because I feel like why does Santa Claus have to be bright white? I don't know. I'm kind of a weirdo, but yeah, he's not going to be right white. He's going to have, a, and honestly, if he does have darker skin tones, then the white of his beard and the white of the fur trim shows up more. The red will make his skin look richer. It all just goes together better. So from like a, an art perspective, why not? Yeah. So here we go. Our Santa Claus. I've got those two colors that I mentioned here out. Um, I don't know if you can see them a little bit darker. This secondary color is definitely darker than me. They're both really rich, really pretty colors. So we're gonna put this first one down. It's very creamy, very good for painting. These are the first colors we're gonna need for Santa Claus because we're gonna start with his face. And I'm just gonna put that one down for now because I'll grab the other color in a second when I need it. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Ultra Liner again for this we've got our pretty little sparkly blue nail okay so we're gonna grab that color which I don't remember which one the lighter one is the lighter one is pivot so we're gonna pick up a glob of it and we're gonna put oh my goodness the cat hair I brushed my cat right before this video and I must have brought a lot of her fur with me ay 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 okay well some of that's just gonna stay because uh yeah, okay, so we're gonna add his face. We're gonna start with an oval. And when you're painting a Santa Claus, like I said, there is a lot of, um, usually, I can't handle the hair. Usually he is like a an ivory white color, and I'm not doing it that way. This is darker than what a lot of times you'd even see his shading done in. If that does not work for you, start out with a lighter color. So we're gonna just do this, make it larger than what you want, so like, Usually the space from hat to beard is not quite this deep, but just to start out so that you have plenty of space in case you do need it, it's good to just have a little bit extra and then overlap. And some designs when you're trying not to overlap, that's different, but in this case we can overlap. So I'm gonna put that in my lamp for 30 seconds. My noisy lamp. 
Yikes, who's yelling at me? There we go. And um, Jolie702, yes. So shading is a skill that definitely not everyone teaches. And I think it's because as far as like from a nail tech perspective, if you're working on a client, generally you don't have the time to shade unless you know it's a high, a high paying client in a prestigious salon where the client, you know, if they bring in a photo, you darn well be able to make that photo on their nails. Um, if it's just, you know, like a regular salon that's trying to make sure that they can see, you know, 10 clients a day, they don't have time to shade. So it's not a skill that, that a nail tech is practicing and not a skill that they would necessarily be trying to promote to other nail techs because it's not something that is done as frequently. With that being said, once you learn to shade and you kind of get it um, in your tool belt, it, it's not really that time consuming. Like you saw how long it took me to add the little bit of shading to my penguin just because I could, I could not do it. So here we have that base. I'm gonna be grabbing the next color, which is taste, Tastes Like Glam. And we're going to essentially outline our face. Now I know I don't need my face to go all the way down that low and that, that'll be covered up with his hair. But we're going to be adding, first just essentially outline the oval of the face. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be kind of a rough outline. And then after you have that done, you can either still use this brush, this ultra liner if you want, which is what I'm gonna do, or you could switch to the application brush, which just because it has a wider space, it'll blend the color out a little bit smoother you're gonna take and you're just gonna kind of blend this out so that the darker areas are around the outside. Normally you wouldn't shade a face in this almost circular manner the way that we are today, but because Santa has a hat above his face, which would provide a shadow, and he's got the beard below that would kind of add a shadowing effect, he does essentially have a circular shadow going around. Now, after you have that done, guess what? We get to cure it again, so much fun, there it goes in the lamp deeply deeply in the lamp so i hope that makes sense um my explanation for why most people don't teach shading and it's not even that they can't do it it's just it doesn't come up in you know like your brain as what to do because if you don't do it very frequently at least you know it's not a big deal so now for the pink if you you know think back to my supply list i said we need a pink the one i'm using is a mauvey pink it's madame lamb's my heart goes boom and it is like a fleshy pink, like a super flushed pink, like the color that my cheeks are after I wash my face every single morning because my <laughs> my face likes to turn bright red. It's my face's favorite pastime. So it could basically match me to this. Um, so this is what the color, color looks like. Really pretty color. It is so, it's like the perfect neutral pink color. It is a gorgeous one. So we're going to put some of that down. Now we're going to take and we're going to be adding some of that to his cheeks. So on his cheeks, we're going to place this color on the far sides. So as you can see, we've got, you know, his shading started. This color is on the darker side of a pink. You don't want like a bright, a bright light pink. You don't want it to be where it's going to make this area look lighter because this is part of the shading. You want to make sure it just adds that flushed hue to his cheeks without making them look bright. Can you guys see the subtlety of that? It is just really simple. You don't have to overdo it. You don't want to overdo it. So then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Place that down. Just sort of pat it out. I did not wipe my brush out from my darker brown before I went into the pink so that it would kind of give me a base of what to blend with. And then just with almost a tapping motion bring it further and further out and around and if as you're looking at it if you know it's uneven one side has more of the color than the other side i wonder if i can switch that okay it's, it is what it is you can just sort of bring it out and around okay so once you're happy with that we're not going to fully cure it is such a thin amount i'm going to just flash cure it so we're going to stick that in the lamp for like 10 seconds give or take I'm going to move this out of my way because, well, I guess I'm going to need it to mix gray. We'll keep it out. Um, the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need our white for painting our Santa's beard and hat, rim, and all that, and the red. So we're going to come back to, say, the nose area in a little while. We're going to start out with those other colors. I'm going to grab this back out of there, and then we're going to, yeah. I, so 
I have a little less space just because of all the stuff that's on my, on my table right now for do, being able to do the live class, so I don't know where to stick anything. So we've got our little Santa face, and because he has white circling his whole face, we're going to start out with that. We're going to just add the white going all the way around. Go around on the sides like that. Bring it in. Kind of take it in a little further than that original oval that I did. And then do the same thing across the top. Okay, so we've got his little face beautifully shaded in. And then I'm going to actually leave it like this, just with the outline. For some reason, I wanted to start out with that. I was just really eager to get that little bit of white to see how it contrasted with the face we started. But we're going to switch to red now. So we're going to add his hat. To do our Santa's hat, we're going to go up, bring it down. Don't touch the white. We're going to add more to the white later, but just get kind of a start. We're going to add a little swoosh. That part is totally optional. And another little swoosh. And then connect the side coming up. Fill that area in. Again, do not touch the white. You could have skipped the white and just waited. Had more patience than me. Okay, so we've got that part started. And then we're going to add the start of his suit down below. So I'm going to go out on the sides like this. And then add the second lines of his arms. Like that. And now fill in this area with the red. When you're done filling this in with red, do not wipe out your brush. Leave the red, that whatever red is left in your brush, leave it in your brush because we're going to use that as a base for mixing our secondary red. So as I said in the beginning, this Santa we're going to shade. We're going to have fun with it. We're going to make him just pop up off the nail. He's going to be amazing. So we're going to need more shades of red. And just because you can grab a shade of burgundy or a darker red, and not have to mix it doesn't mean you shouldn't mix it. <laughs> For me, that's a good part of the joy of this whole dealio, is getting to mix some paint and getting exactly the color you want. So we're going to put this in our lamp for the full, uh, full minute. So in it goes. While that's curing, I'm going to grab my little paint palette that I wanted to kick out of the area before. And we're going to be grabbing some red from the red gel paint. Place that down. I'm going to grab two scoops of it on my brush. You kind of twist your brush around to get it off. And then I'm going to grab a dab of the black. And then normally I don't recommend mixing your paints with your paintbrushes because it's not that nice to your paintbrushes. But to be perfectly honest, I always do. And we're going to mix that and we have our wonderful shade of brick red that we're going to be using for all of this. So I'm going to set that down. I'm going to wipe out my brush completely to get all of that red out of there. And then we're going to do the same thing with white. We're going to take some white, set it down a little bit more, set it down, and then grab black. And we're going to be making our shade of gray. This will be for shading in the fur, the beard, everything that has white on it, we're going to shade it with some gray. We've got our white and we have our gray. Don't overdo darkening the gray. You don't want it to look black or, you know, charcoal color. Just like a really nice, pretty dove gray. So now that we have that done, we're going to grab our Santa Claus. There he is in all of his started glory. I need to take a drink. Oh my goodness, you guys. I kid you not. I just fell right down my front. Doesn't surprise me at all. So there we go, we got our Santa Claus. We're going to grab some of that new darker red that we just made, and we're gonna start on his hat. We're gonna go on the underside of the areas. So he's got this little part that's folded over. So we wanna make sure that that looks separated from the rest of his hat. So we're going to take, go right along the bottom. Don't worry about blending it out yet, just get the color down. Once you have that, decide whether you want things to be shaded 
on the left or right. So the bottom of everything is going to have a shade and then left or right, we have to decide. I'm going to go with the right. So this means the light source is up over here and it's coming down this way. So it's going to illuminate this side and it actually would not illuminate down here too much because that would be blocked by that part of the hat. So that's how our shading would look. So after you have that done, because we have more of this dark red to use, I'm going to wait to blend it out until we get more of it done. So we're going to go, <coughs> sorry, we're going to go down here. We're going to do the same thing on his arms, going kind of down there. And then on the other side, we're going to make sure we go all the way down that side like that on the underside of the arm. And then just a hint on the top of that arm. So at this point, we're also going to envision where his beard will end because at the bottom, wherever his beard is, so just think beard, 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 it's going to end about here. We're going to add some shading to the bottom of that too, because where his beard ends underneath that, there will be some shading. So this is a hypothetical because we don't have the beard yet, but that is approximately where I think that beard is going to end. And so I'm going to wipe my brush out, not really clean it, but just get the excess color out so that when I go to start blending this out, I'm not adding any more color. I'm just diffusing what I already put down. So we're going to blend this out. If it doesn't look perfectly smooth, which, you know, depending, it may or may not, the things you can do is either grab some of your original red, you can grab some clear top coat to help you blend it out, or you can just keep patting it and eventually it'll come through. Okay, so there's the first part of it blended out. Here's going to be the next part. And then we're going to do that on the same side, on the other side, the same thing on the other side. One thing to remember when you're doing something like this is once you apply top coat, whether it's glossy or matte, it will look smoother. So you just have to be patient with it and don't rush the process. So once you have that done, that part, we're going to do the same thing down here on the arm. Blend it out. Same thing on the bottom there, just a little bit on his side, carry this through, bring that color out. The great thing with mixing your own colors, especially like with this red, is you know it's gonna be the same tone of red. Cause you know, within red, there's some that have a little bit more of like a blue tone, a cool tone red, a extra warm tone red. You know, there's, there's just, there's these variables. And if you don't mix them yourself, you don't necessarily know that your reds are gonna be the right blend for what you're doing. If you mix them yourself, there's no question. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the original red and help blend out this beard area. This is gonna be a softer bit of shading just to help give his beard some height. We don't need it to look as precise as it was. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're gonna cure this again. And it. I hope you guys can see how much depth has happened already just with that little bit of shading we did. So we're gonna put that in. This will be another full 60 seconds. So for anyone that is watching this, I hope that, uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, even if a Santa Claus isn't something that you would ever want to paint or ever paint just because, you know, it's not your style, it's not your religion, whatever the reason, there is so much to be seen and learned from painting him that, you know, I hope just the shading element gives you, gives you something. And he's got such nice contrasting colors that he's fun to paint for for us Christmas enthusiasts. Speaking of Christmas enthusiasts, I am so excited because I'm gonna be setting up my Christmas tree in here this weekend and I can't wait. It's all pink and glittery and beautiful. So I am a Christmas enthusiast, so I'm very excited about that. It's gonna be, I don't know, I'll have to decide. It's either gonna be, I've got two windows in here. It's either gonna be in front of that window that's behind me, which I think is where it's gonna go. That's where it was last year or the window that's over there. And I don't know, I'll have to decide. I'll probably put it in both places and move it. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, I did that last year. I ended up moving it. Goodness. There we go. That's where we want to be. All right. So we have our Santa Claus here. We're going to go back to white and we're going to be adding his white areas now. The rest of the way. I'm going to start on his hat. We're going to be adding the brim of the hat. Do not necessarily make it smooth lines. Add some little wiggles in your brush to give it some texture. You know, have fun with it. It doesn't have to be a straight line. 
Same thing on his forehead. Give it just a little bit of, of wiggling and fill that in just like so. Okay, once you have it, have that part filled in, if you are using gel polish instead, I would probably flash cure just because it tends to move on you a little bit. And then we get to do the beard. So we're gonna carry this side down. Give it just a gentle sway. Same thing on the other side, carry it down. Give it just a gentle little bit of, bit of uneven wavy edging. And then we're going to fill that in. Okay. Once we get it all the way filled in, there is some more white that we can do on here. Depending on how big you were painting your Santa Claus on the nail, the cuffs of his sleeves are white, but then he also has the white trim going down the middle of his coat that will do. Okay, get that part started. And then once we have this done, we are going to add that down the middle of his coat. Same thing, a little bit wiggly in the brush. Okay, that, and unfortunately, we're going to cure this again. This would be the major downfall of doing a live class of portrait painting because there's, it's so much like do a bunch and then wait, where it's not like you can just keep going. I still think it would be fun, but it'd just be kind of one of those, a whole bunch of just listening to me talk to myself because what else are you going to do? Although I do have good stories occasionally that I share with you guys every once in a while. Speaking of good stories, I was really impressed today. Uh, Melody was in the back seat and she had a little Magna Doodle and all of a sudden she got very excited because she wrote mom for the first time and she's been spelling mom lately. Like you can ask her how do you spell mom and she'll M-O-M -M without hesitation. But she hadn't written it before and I didn't help her with it or anything and she did a really good job. Well, that's caring. I've got 23 seconds. I'll find you guys a picture because maybe you'll all be as excited as I am. You see that? It says mom. I, it was a very proud, very proud moment for me. So yeah, that was, that was the highlight of my day, at least until I get to chat with all of you. Okay, so there is the lamp. All right, so we have our Sandy Claus. Now we're going to go to our gray. We pre-mixed that gray before. We're going to grab some of that. And when you're doing this on like the trim of that, the trim of the hat and the trim of the, this fur trim down the middle, we're going to apply it along the wavy line. Let's see, just kind of keep along with it around the sides too. So apply it like, like you would, like you're just outlining it. We're gonna do the same thing down the side here. Remember what sides you're shading on. Never forget where your sun is because if at any point your shading is in the wrong place, all of a sudden it'll just look a little bit strange and you may not really know why it looks strange. It'll just have this kind of, I don't, it will look incorrect. So then after you have that, we're going to just take and we're going to kind of bring it up. It doesn't have to be nearly as smoothly shaded as say his face or the velvet coat because it does have the fur. It can be a little more patchy looking. So we've got that and we're gonna do the same thing down here. Just kind of loosely bring it out. And then at one point on this part of the trim, we're going to go shading all the way across because that will be where his belt goes through. So once you have that part done, then we're gonna do the beard. I want the shading, for me personally, I want the shading on the beard to be less dark. I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I'm actually gonna grab a little bit more white and I'm going to dip my brush in both white and gray. So now that I've got that color where it's, I've got some of both, I'm gonna be adding just some, some lines going through. Nothing that is too much on here. Just little, little bits of lines going through. And then after I have them kind of started, I will brush them a little bit, a little bit more. I want the beard 
to be more white and less gray, whereas the trim on the hat and everything to be a little, not necessarily more gray than white, but just slightly darker. You want his beard to have this otherworldly whiteness to it. Brighten it up a little bit right there. Just be cautious not to make it too dark. So once you have the beard shaded, I did not think about this before. You also need to grab a little bit of gray and under the beard on the white trim, you need to add a little bit of the shading there like that. This time we are only going to flash cure this because we're going to be doing a little bit of overlapping, but not that much. And it'll be okay for the sake of the video. Turn that lamp on. It beeps. So like I said, I'm getting used to my new lamp and it beeps sometimes more than I think it will. It beeps when a hand goes in, it beeps when a hand comes out, it beeps when it turns on, it beeps when it turns off. So sometimes when I'm just listening for like the cues of knowing what it's doing, it beeps not because I think it's doing what I think it's doing. Sometimes it'll beep because it thinks I took something out when I didn't and I think it's curing and it's not curing. There have been different times where I've thought I've stuck something in there to be done and then when I've pulled it out and it's not done, it's kind of like, oh man. So I have to watch it closer. And like I said, we're getting used to each other. Yes, so um, more of the things that us moms get amazed by. I love all the firsts, wish I could look at pictures of all my kids cute stuff i it's it's so funny there's these you know all these things that she does that are are her first and she's had a lot of them lately like she just learned how to spell mom yesterday and then today she's she wrote it it cracked i mean just amazed me that <laughs> that she did that because it was so out of the blue yeah so here we go back to our santa claus can you guys see all the shading and depth that we have on him i really i hope you guys are getting something from this because Yes, it's time consuming and yes, it is one of those things where some people would probably question whether or not it's worth it. But for those of you that, you know, do take clients and this isn't a, or even if it is a hobby, but if you are somebody that's taking clients, do you know how much you could upcharge to have detailed art this way? And a lot of the time is in curing. And if you're doing two hands, you're working on one while the other is curing it doesn't take really all of that much longer because this time would almost, you know, it'd be the same amount of time to do two hands as it would be to do one. So we're going to be adding his black belt going across his middle, just like so. Line it up with where you added the shading on his, his fur. So add the black belt and then I'm going to be adding his eyes with the same, same black gel paint. Okay, here's one eye, here's the other eye, just like so. Once those are done, I'm going to make a few adjustments to my Santa from versus what the photo is. One thing about the photo that I would say is not my favorite thing about Santa is that he doesn't have a mustache. And I like my Santa stuff mustache, so we're going to be giving ours a mustache today. So I'm going to be I mean, I guess he does, but it's just not quite as, I don't know, specific as I, I like it. So we're going to be doing a nice little mustache like that. And then on the other side, pairing that up. And then even before curing this, like just immediately right away, I'm going to grab some of my gray and just sort of blend it in, swirl it into that white wet wet white hard to say don't worry too much about how this part looks because we're going to adjust that with his nose in a second okay so we have that still going in I'm actually going to just leave the white and gray mix that's on my brush in my brush we're going to be adding his eyebrows there's the first one Here's the second one. If they look too gray, if you like me and wash your brush, you can go through and add a swipe of the white to brighten them up a little bit, just like that. Now, unfortunately, we do have to cure this again, so I'm gonna put it back in my lamp. 
This time I'm going to do it the full 60 seconds. So one thing that's kind of exciting is next month's class can be, isn't going to be a, like a season like the last three because in September I did October Halloween designs and then in October I did autumn November designs and then in November I'm doing winter Christmas designs. You know there really isn't anything like that for January. So we can have some some fun with January. We can do different things. Um, you know would you guys just you know I'm going to put a poll probably in about a week for what we should do for December's live class. But we could do something like, I know I've mentioned doing 40 elements, like a live class on making things that are 40, either like the conception and how to think about them and how to build them from a structural standpoint to really narrowing down on templates or hinges. There are just different things. Um, we could do a live class that's all about magnets and some of the, there's a lot of little tips and tricks that I've come up with when I use magnets over the past couple years. So we could do a live class like that. There are just so many different ones. Or we could do like a drawing live class. I did a Mickey Mouse character breakdown this summer at one point. We could do a different character like that. We could do anybody practically. Any ideas you have, don't hesitate to tell me about them. And I will either write them down if I don't have them written down yet, or I will make sure they end up on the poll as long as I don't get like 50 ideas. But you know, I'll make sure that eventually we'll get all of these classes taken care of. So we are almost done with the Santa Claus and he is looking absolutely adorable. So I'm going to take, so of these two colors that I was using for his skin, I'm going to take the darker one. So whichever one was your darker one, that's the one you want to grab right now. We're going to do his nose. So we're going to paint his nose with our darker shade of the nude color and we're going to paint an oval nose. You're going to be adding some of the lighter color eventually, but start out with your darker one. Pop down his circular little nosy there. And then I'm going to wipe my brush quick. I'm going to grab the pink tone, that mauvey pink. I'm going to be adding that color right in here for his lips that are sticking out underneath that mustache. And then we're going to be taking our yellow gel paint and adding the belt buckle. We're getting close guys to the end of this. Actually, gold would have looked nice too. If my yellow hadn't already been out. So we've got the belt buckle on there. Okay, now at this point, before I cure this again, the only thing I can think of to add is I forgot to add the little puff on the end of his hat. So we're gonna be doing that little bit of white and immediately go into my gray. Add some gray to it, swirl it around. All right, I'm gonna cure this for 30 seconds. The only thing at this point that we're really gonna be adding to is that nose. And I will add a little to the belt buckle, but we're gonna, first thing is gonna be the nose. So 30 seconds because that was gel polish and not gel paint is plenty. So when you're doing the nose, I said start out with the darker the darker brown color. So you want that to like set out away from his face. And to do that, you want it to have darker edges. So you want it to have like that darker rim around it. So then when you add a little bit of the lighter color on top, the darker edges will still seep through. And we're going to definitely be adding some of that pink. He's got a rosy nose. And so you're gonna add a little pink on the bottom edges and on the sides a little bit, a little bit of the lighter color in the middle, but then that darker base color will be the dominant color showing through. So if you add that first, then that gives you that darker, that darker hint underneath. So we're going to start out adding more to that nose with the pinkish color, just tapping it kind of around the sides. At no point do you want it to look pink on your Santa Claus. You just want it to look like he has a little bit of a pink undertone. So tap that. Do not cure yet. Grab your lighter shade of flesh tone. We're going to be adding that on the top of it there, just a little bit on the nose. You want the nose to stick out, but you don't want it to look, I don't know, like bulbous or something. You want it to just be kind of like a nice smooth little nose on there. So now we got his nose. Like I said, the only thing really left to do would be his belt buckle. I am going to grab the brown gel paint. This is one I didn't have out yet. Like I told you guys, I always think of things I need that I don't have. So I grabbed the brown gel paint from Madame Glam. It's like a chocolatey. We're going to be grabbing that, 
just with a little bit, we're going to be adding the slightest hint of shading on the belt buckle. So again, remember where your sun is. So because our sun is here on this side, we aren't going to add any brown to the top of the top line or to the left of the left line or the left of the right line. So that's going to go there and it's going to go across the bottom. So that's going to give you that dimensional directional shading just like so and then you know what these are done all of our designs are done I'm gonna throw this one in the lamp for its last 60 second sunbathe I'm gonna move these off to the side I'm gonna grab our top coat and then we're done okay so here we go here are the first two I'm gonna start by top coating the snowflakes and we're gonna go back over those anyone who's joined me um, afterwards, you know, at the end of this video, this is the first design we did. It has three different snowflakes in different skill levels or different speeds. The quickest, the easiest one, moderate, and the most advanced. We're going to cover this with some top coat. I don't know how much of the glitter you guys get to see in the video, but this color, background blue, is so pretty. It's called Tomboy from Madame Glam. And it has so much glitter in it it is so dimensional so we've got that one coated beautiful I'm gonna put that in the lamp for its sunbathe as I put it yes yes I know noisy lamp okay then we're going to this is the second design we did this is our little penguin tried to keep it pretty basic minimal shading I, I did do a little bit because I can't help myself but that is our penguin love penguins I think they're adorable Going to top coat him to make sure they're all nice and shiny. All right, that one can go in my lamp with its other partner. My lamp restarts every time I stick something in there. Okay, and last but not least, we have our Santa Claus. We're going to apply some top coat on him as well. All of that shading, all of those lines that we don't want fade away. All of the lines we do want show up. It's all about blending and, and making sure that your lines go how you want them to be. He is so cute and so adorable. And I wish he was on my nail instead of a practice nail right now. It's just so cute. Okay, he's going in. It's going to restart again, of course. So here is the snowflakes again, all finished off, all top coated. I will grab the other ones as they finish in the lamp. Yeah, so like I said before, if anybody has any any ideas for what they want the next live classes to be, definitely, um, you know, either shoot me a message if you want it to be a private idea and, you know, just just let me know. I'm, I'm doing these classes for all of you, all of you that want to be watching them, all of you that watch them later, even if you don't, you know, if you're not watching them right now. But <laughs> yes, and as far as the lamp goes, it is driving me crazy. I'm getting used to it. I'll probably, all of a sudden, it'll probably just be second nature the way that it's working, but I've only had it a week and currently it is driving me nuts. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it recharges is nice and it's got a really large charging thing. And like when you're working on clients, you're not taking things in and out of it with as much frequency as I am, but huh, I'm done with it for now. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, it is kind of driving me nuts, but I'll figure it out. So let's look at these. Now that they're all done, all cured, all top coated, all finished. Yes, so cute. Yep, which one is your guys' favorite? Anybody have a have an absolute favorite? They're different, the penguin and the Santa are like the same style, but the snowflakes are, are a different vibe altogether. I love that guy, so cute. So thank you guys so much for joining me again, all of you. I love this interaction we got going. I love, you know, chatting with you all. It's it's a fun night for me. I hope you guys get as much fun out of it as I do. And I can't wait for next month when we can get back to doing a different type of topic instead of just painting something. We maybe will get to sculpt something or who knows what we're going to do. I don't know. I'm going to need your help with that. So definitely keep your eyes out for the poll, like I said probably in about a week, but I have a secondary business where I own a home bakery too. 
And so we've been making baking boxes, treat boxes for different holidays. And so next week I'm going to be baking like crazy for Thanksgiving and for all kinds of people in my hometown because apparently people like sweets besides just me. I know I do. Obviously, you guys know I like food if you watch my videos all the time because I'm constantly sculpting food. Anywho, yeah, so probably sometime next week if I can figure out when to fit it in. It just takes me a second to do, but sometimes a second I don't have. I hope you guys had fun, and if you want to participate in future live classes, send me an email. There are the, There's my email in the description box below, so look at that, and you can get advanced notice of these live classes as well as the reference photos. It's like the snowflakes, the Santa Claus, and the penguin you guys would get to see in your email. You could have them on your phone up next to you so that if you're painting while I'm painting, you can listen to me drool on and look at your reference photo instead of having to look at the screen. And thank you guys so much and you're welcome. And yeah, have a good night. Get some sleep. I know I'm tired. Good night. <laughs>